Welcome back, Jose Oliveira from Tipco. On previous videos, we found some JavaScript code on the internet and we have it up and running outside the Spotfire environment. Then we prepared for development where we download a blank template from Tipco Spotfire GitHub account. And on this video, we're going to port that code to Spotfire and save it to the library. In order to start coding, I am going to replicate what I found or what I did in CodePen and put it in Spotfire. So this is the very first thing to do, replicate the code, including the, the data, hard-coded data. Everything is going to be hard-coded at this point just to make sure that it renders and runs properly in a spot fire. And then I'm going to configure the dependencies or the access to mod manifests and other, other options, such as the mod name and, and mod version. Then I'm going to connect the data, and, and this is going by parsing the underlying data by using the mods API to see how I parse the uh, categorical data or continuous or hierarchical data. And then once I'm ready and everything is connected properly, I am going to save the mod into the library for everyone in the organizations to use. Okay, we're ready to start coding. At this point, I should have my Spotfire development environment ready. Here I have my Visual Studio code. I already downloaded the JS that started extractor from my Spotfire mod master from GitHub. I already installed the dependencies and I already did the NPM run server and I have a live server up and running and my Spotfire is already connected to it. If you miss that, let me close this and do it that again by going to development, create visualization mod, Click connect development server, make sure the URL matches, click connect. And now I have this mod started up and running. At the bottom, I have my developer tools. Developer tools are very useful for debugging information or for check for errors while developing. To bring that up, I go to tools, development, developer tools. If I don't see this option available, go to options, make sure that the show development menu checkbox is on. Click OK and restart Spotfire. Let me explain you how this mod starter works. I go to source folder and I have three main files, index.html, which has the HTML markup that contains a placeholder for my mod to, uh, to run. So here in my title, I can uh, call it uh, different start because that's the chart that we are gonna be developing. And here the mod container, anything that I inside the mod container is gonna be replaced by my main JS. So if I do something like loading and click save, you're going to see that loading was taking place, but it was immediately replaced by this main JS file. So if I go to main JS and I look at the portion of the code that renders this information and I comment that out, then nothing is going to get rendered. Now, uh, now I am ready to start porting the code from my different chart that I found to Spotfire. So in a similar way, this different chart works like having a placeholder. Here I have loading. I have a placeholder called my chart. If I run it, you also see that this loading is being replaced by this graph uh, by the code from the JS portion and is uh, replacing or building on top. So I'm going to copy this placeholder and put it in my index HTML, go to my placeholder here. And I like to put it inside my mod container, click save, nothing happens. And now the CSS, which is responsible for the colors, the style, the thickness of the line and other aspects of this visualization. So I'm going to put it here on my main CSS. I'm just going to keep adding to my main CSS, paste, save. And now the last part is to select everything on my JavaScript, click copy, go to my main JS and replace the part that I commented out with my, with my code. So I click paste. And I'm going to take advantage, advantage to collapse this data. Notice this is the hard-coded data. So I'm going to collapse. And when I click Save, 
it should run exactly the same, but I see an error here. It says D3 is not defined. I know that this visualization, this difference chart requires the D3 JavaScript library. How do I find that? Sometimes it's here in the HTML, a reference to an external source by the script tag pointing to uh, external website, or I can also see it here in my settings, go to JS and I can see here that is using this version of version three of the three. So I click on this little icon, I paste the URL or I, uh, I can also paste the URL here, select everything, click copy, I can close this, close this also, and going to add that file here. So when I do d3.d3.js and I paste everything and I click save, I should now see uh, the graph. I don't see it because I have to have a reference of my D3 on my index, just like I did with my main JS. So here I'm going to duplicate the line and I'm going to put it in here at the very first, click save, and now I see exactly the same graph here on my mod. So now the next thing I want to do is to make sure that my visualization adjust with the width and height. So let's do that. I am going to start coding now and tweaking my code. I go to main and there is a part here where I see that the width and height is hard coded. So my width is now going to be the window size width and my height is going to be window size uh, height. When I click save, now my visualization should take the entire screen. If I maximize, I can see it takes the, the entire screen. Now the next step is to replace this hard-coded data with the Spotfire data. I already did that work ahead, so I am going to uh, go to the, the code right here. I already did that work. So I am going to use this code that I'm going to explain in a minute. I am um, creating a blank Spotfire array, and then I'm going to replace my old data that is hard-coded here with my Spotfire data after parsing and reading the data. I'm taking all the rows from a data view, and then I am adding the information on the on my array, I'm building that array. So let's let's uh, just copy and paste this code. But before that, I am making some references to my continuous axis y1 and y2. So this is, uh, I, uh, which brings a, a good point. It's time to uh, configure or set up my visualization to accommodate with this axis. So I go to my mod manifest and here I see, this uh, axis, so I'm going to duplicate this line of code and call this y1 and y2 and put in, putting the second one to the right. And every time you make changes to the mod manifest, I'm gonna save it now, I have to click on this icon and reload the manifest. Every time I do changes on my mod manifest, I'm gonna repeat that, you have to click on mod manifest, reload manifest. So now I am seeing this axis here and, uh, and, and then one here on the right and one here on the left. So if I change this to my apple and um, uh, the other one is, uh, one is apple, apple and Amazon and then X axis is going to be my date. Right now nothing happens because it's hard coded data. I have to paste the code that I already did from here to my Spotfire. So let me select everything, go to my main.js and right before the data, I'm going to paste and notice that I'm going to replacing this with this, that. I'm going to also show you how to debug information by using the console log. Well, before I do that, let me just uh, save so you can see how this works. So I'm gonna click save and now I can see that my 
a different chart is acting and reacting to my spot fire data i can the filter works just the same i can change my axis and everything else so let me show how to debug like the, the, as the last step i do console log and then i add um, my spot fire data and i'm going to just slice just going to take the first three elements just to see just to show you the difference between one and the other one and the other one is going to be i'm going to put it at the beginning my my hard-coded data but my hard-coded data has to be before i replace otherwise it's going to be exactly the same so i click save and here in my uh, developer tools i see that the first one is the hard-coded data new york san francisco and if I open the first uh, record, I see I have two continuous measure and one categorical, which is the date. And the structure is the same here on the spot fire data. And then I replace the data with the spot fire data. And now I have this up and running perfectly. The, le the last step in my mod manifest is not only changing the, the axis, it's also changing the name of my mod. I'm going to call this mod the difference chart i'm going to give it an id of js diff chart just by convention and at the end it's very important to include all the reference that you use in your mod in this case i only use one reference so i'm going to put it there v3 v3.js and click save now i'm ready to save the mod so i am going to go here uh, go to my visualization panel or fly out here i see my mod starter i can always create an icon but that's going to be part of another of another video as well as developing marking or maybe changing the color because right now this axis doesn't doesn't do anything i can remove it or i can keep working on that maybe i can add a little configuration pop-up to have additional settings like for example changing this label temperature doesn't make sense anymore so i can keep adding that and um, make changes to my mod so now that i i uh, once i'm happy with my mod i can save it uh, i well right now it's disabled because i have to disconnect my mod from the server so i click here disconnect and i have to make sure that well i have a warning here because i changed the mod the name of the mod and maybe the version is going to ask me if i want to replace that mod i click ok because now it's disconnected and now i'm ready to save it so i click here now i this thing is enabled i can save it as a file or i can save it in, in the library item for everyone in the organization to use if i want to save it as a file and send it some, somewhere else or use it in a different spot for an environment then i have to uh, signed the mod and that's a different process also part of a different video and that's it okay this concludes the mod development life cycle i hope you like it and at least you have a feel of what developing a mod looks like here is a summary of what we did i found the code in the internet on many of the javascript libraries out there in my case i was looking for a specific chart in this case was the difference chart i found and i put it in code pen and then i prepare for the development i went to github downloaded the spot fire mod masters extracted from the examples folder the js dev started and start my environment by installing the dependencies compiling and connecting to tipco spot fire then i ported the code to spot fire by replicating exactly from code pen to Visual Studio so I can see it in Spotfire. Then I configured the mod manifest. I set the name and version number. I configured the axis. In this case, was Y1 and Y2. And I added the dependencies. In this case, was D3 version 3 AS. Then I start coding. I set up the height and width of my visualization so you can take the entire screen when the screen was resized. Uh, and then I also parse the Spotfire data, which is an important step to do by accommodating the underlying data into what my different chart requires in order to render to render the visualization i could have kept coding more like setting setting up the marking or configure the color axis or maybe adding a 
pop up to add additional configuration specific to my mod, but that's part of a different videos. Then I save and publish the mod. Well, I just save the mod into the Spotify library for everyone in the organization to use. But if you want to publish the mod so you can deploy it in a different server, or maybe you want to share in the Tico exchange, then you have to sign your mod with a certificate. And that's also part of a different video. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And please share your comments below. And uh, that's it. Thank you.